So I gotta be real with y'all. I was about to leave this platform. Uh, Silent Departure was gonna be the, uh, the last video. Because it's just, I don't know man. With everything going on in the world, it's really hard to just keep making videos about video games. And, and even when I try to shift a little bit to, to cover something that isn't EQOA, people are like, eh. I mean, I get it, right? You sub for one thing and that's the way it is. But I always hated that about YouTube. I know I sound like a broken record here because I've, I've complained about this before. But there's a, a wide variety of games that I like to play. I don't just want to play one. I don't even want to stick to just one genre, and that's just not the way it works over here. But with everything going on in the news lately, and speaking of news, two people that I went to school with back to back got arrested in the local news. One day after the other, I'm like, whoa! I was the first guy. I was shocked because you know, he was always a really nice guy, and uh, it had to do with taking money from somebody. And uh, the second guy, same thing, taking money from somebody. Now, we're going through really rough times. I don't have to tell y'all that. The economy's about to go. It's over. I know people don't like to hear that, but the banks, they're going to start to have trouble. They're already having trouble, actually. <laughs> but they're going to be switching over to all digital currency. And I was warning y'all about this years ago. And people just don't like to hear it because, well, it's not, it's not pleasant. It's not something you want to hear, right? It's not good news. But I'm not here to itch your ears. I'm here to try to prepare you for what you are about to be in, which is an, a massive storm. The worst time in human history, right? And if you love somebody, guys... You want to prepare them for that. You don't just leave. Like, if I didn't care about y'all, I wouldn't be talking to you. Because when you don't care about something, do you give it your attention? No. You don't. And I've explained before that I had a channel here that had thousands of views. Some of my most popular videos, almost 500,000 views on the biggest one I did. It's, uh... It's it's quite the contrast. It was a long time ago, and I didn't keep with it. You know, I could have stuck with it. I've had opportunities to chase the Elgo and get big over here, but it just was never in my heart. I don't know. And every time I felt like I was starting to get big, something in me was like, eh. I was afraid of it. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't want the responsibility of 200,000 subs waiting for the next video. Because it's not really why I started the channel. It was a passion project. And it was never really in my heart. So I've always done what's in my heart. And what the Lord has laid on my heart now is that I don't really want you to leave your post. I want you to stay on the wall and keep warning people. And the reason why I know he said this to me is because somebody opened a dialogue with me the other day. And it really shocked me. It was one of my subs. And I was thinking, wow, like this guy's starting, like he's listening to the stuff I'm telling him. And he's this close to coming to Jesus for remission of his sins. This close. And to me that says, well, if this one guy... I've had two people reach out over this entire time. I've had two people reach out and ask me about Jesus and about things on a deeper level. On the side, away from the channel. And that that right there, it's like, well, these if these are two more people that are going to escape the fire and be up in heaven... And I'll be able to hang out with them and we'll be able... That's great. And it just seems to me like it would be a dereliction of duty to stop what I'm doing. I f every time I try to walk... And I've done this before, you guys know. Every time I try to walk away, I get this guilty feeling like, man, you really need to go back. You need to stick with it. They hated Jesus, you know, and some people are going to hate you. That's just the way it is. Don't take it personal. Keep talking. But right now, we've got a situation in this world that is rapidly spiraling out of control. You've got Israel in protest mode. You've got France in protest mode. And you've got the United States. Everything that happened with Tennessee, everything going on with Trump, it's all leading people into conflict. And I've been telling you guys that there is an unseen satanic force that is driving 
two people groups together into a war. I told you it happened before in Germany. It started just like this, exactly like it's going right now. Radical left, radical right. You had the whole... I don't, I don't, you know, it's it's hard to talk on a lot of this stuff. If you haven't seen the video I did on it, I'm gonna I'm going to direct you to it again. It's only got 400 views, and this is stuff that is critical for you to know. It is critical for you to understand just what is going on in the world. It's <laughs> it's so rough when you want to wake people up, and I'm I'm a really forceful person when it comes to trying to get my opinion <laughs> into someone's head. I was talking with my mom the other day. She's like, you know, one of the problems with you, David, is you just don't stop. Someone tells you they don't want to hear it, and you don't stop. You just keep driving it into their head. And it's like, we don't want to hear it. We don't want you preaching to us. We don't want you doing this. It's too much. You, all you do is you're lecturing people. They don't want to hear it. What, you've always been this way since you were little. What is it with you? And it made me think, it's like, maybe that's why he saved me. Because he knew I wouldn't stop running my mouth. No matter how rough it got, no matter how close it was to somebody kicking in my door and taking my life, I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> I can't do it. There's a fire inside of me, and it will not be put out. Because once you see the truth... And if you love the Lord and you fear the Lord and not man, it's very hard to shut that person up. That makes you very, very dangerous to a government who's trying to dismantle that. They don't want people like me here because we are the stiffest resistance that they have ever come up against. And they know it all throughout history. You want to see what Stalin did to Christians back in the day? A lot of that's not talked about. There's a lot of things that are going to come to light because God reveals these things before the last days and it's going to make people very, very angry. I'm trying to prepare people for that so that they don't take vengeance into their own hands because God does not favor that. I'm trying to warn people on the left and the right and it really can wear you down, man, when people are constantly hurling insults at you on both sides. Oh, you're a bigot. You're a homophobe on the left. Ah, you're a Christ cuck. You're just useless on the right. And, and to both sides, I'm trying to give them the scripture and tell them, look, you're being drawn into this conflict, man. There are people that want this conflict. They get order out of chaos. It is how it works. Well, what are we supposed to do? Just sit on our hands and do nothing? We're not supposed to stop it when they're, when they're doing this stuff to kids and they're reading all this filth to kids. Well, no, you're supposed to speak against it, right? And if somebody attacks you, you can defend yourself, but you're not to go out there and start a fire in at people because now God's not with you anymore. Because why? Because vengeance belongs to him. Things are going to get rough, guys. And I'm not about to abandon this channel now. They, they, very, they might very well shut me down, but they'll never shut my mouth. If they throw me in jail, I'll continue to talk to the people around me in jail. They'd have to put me in isolation. Okay? Because that's just the way it is. I, I'm, I'm just, I've always been that way. I, when I believe in something and I know it's right to speak on it, I can't shut my mouth. So, there it is. <laughs> it's just all this stuff. It's so weird that two people I knew back to back in the news for basically the same crime. And I can't even sit there and boast on them or, or, or be angry on them because we're all sinful. You know, people fall on hard times. They try to do things that they know they shouldn't do, right? There's that still... That still uh, quiet voice telling them, don't, don't do it, don't do it. And they just ignore it. Everybody's got that because God has poured out his spirit. He, the people know. He put the law, he wrote the law, the law on your heart. And this is something that you know, people will say, well, you, can, you don't need Christ to have morals. Well, that's because he wrote his laws on your heart. You know what's right and what's wrong. <laughs> Think about the first time you did something wrong as a kid, you knew it was wrong. 
it's not like you were ignorant of that fact that it was wrong if you stole something or you did listen it's not just because your parents told you not to but there was this condemnation that came up in your heart and you felt it and if you ignore that long enough it'll go completely numb and it gets so bad the more you ignore it because the sin always seems to grow and real biblical repentance most christians don't even seem to really speak on it they'll tell you that repentance is complete and total cessation of sin you no longer sin again that's not reality god in the bible repented that he made man that means he regretted it and if that doesn't sting that our creator looked at us and was like face palm that hurts that bothers me but it's it, biblical repentance is that you feel bad for what you've done and you want to stop you make plans to stop you agree with god that yes this is wrong you confess it to god and you go the other way it doesn't mean you're perfect and sinless and paul is very clear on this in the scriptures that the flesh is always doing sinful stuff because flesh it has sin inside of it but with the heart and the mind we serve christ we agree with the law and it's crazy i hear people talk about how oh america has never been christian this and that okay well then where did our laws come from do you do you understand that like the first book that was ever put together is the bible and it had the laws in it now we're not as christians we're not under the law but that doesn't mean we should break the law we should do the best we can to abide in it we're saved by grace through faith but as you walk with jesus he's going to pull you closer and closer and the things that you're doing are going to feel worse and worse until you don't want to do them anymore i struggle with sin just like every other man and if anybody says he's without sin he is a liar and the truth is not in him that means the spirit of god is not in his temple it's not there because he hasn't confessed his sin and that he's a sinner this is the main problem I have with LGBT, and I've been over on the Christianity, quote-unquote Christianity subreddit, and got myself banned like four times. My account is completely, they're like, get out of here, <laughs> because I circumvented the ban and just kept going back. Because the stuff I've seen over there, it's like, look, I know you guys are like, you're struggling with your sin, but you don't want to say it's a sin. You don't want to admit that it's a sin, and in fact, you want to be proud about it. And you want to co-opt the flag. You want to co-opt the rainbow, which is a promise to God that he would never flood the earth again. What do you think that says to him when you take that flag and you're proud about what, your, your status? It's a big middle finger. What is it about Pride Month that has demon right in the middle of it? And I've pointed, I pointed this out before. There's a lot of symbolism in the world, guys. The Bible is full of symbolism. Moses lifted up the serpent on the pole. That was a symbol of Christ yet to come. Because it said, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. I know for people who don't know, the scripture is like, What do you mean? You're saying Jesus was cursed? Yes, he was, he was cursed on that tree when he took the, the sins upon himself. He was made a curse for us. And a lot of people don't know that. Just like they think Jesus was this beautiful man and he had long hair. That's not true. The Bible says that nobody, nobody looked at him like he was anything. He wasn't, he wasn't good looking. And they say Satan's got horns and he's in hell. Well, no, Lucifer was beautiful, is beautiful, and he's not in hell. He's the prince of the power of the air. He goes up and down between heaven and earth, accusing Christians, by the way, until finally Michael throws him out. And when Michael throws him out, he turns around to go after Christians right away. Why? Because we are the light of the world. He knows that. He knows that we're Israel's best friend and he hates them. Why does he hate them? Because those are God's original covenant people. And he hates everything about God and he seeks to be like God and he wants to replicate God. You got this Fed now thing coming in quick. Digital currency is coming. Okay, I told you about it years ago, and now they're telling you this July we're kicking off Fed now. And it's not right away, it's not going to hit right away where they're doing this Mark of the Beast stuff. It's going to take time, but it's coming. It's conditioning you. 
just like what happened in 2020 was conditioning you. You're being primed for when he gets his ass thrown out and comes down here. That's what's happening. His people, just like Christ's people, evangelize and they do their thing and they're trying to prepare his kingdom for him. And I'm trying to warn you about it so you don't get caught up in it. I'm not going to stop speaking on this stuff. All right? I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going away. It's not, I, I've tried to do it, but he keeps pulling me back. Why? Because I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. And that's a good thing, okay? Because his yoke is light. He is a great master. And if you're not a slave to Christ, guess who you're going to be a slave to? And he's going to put a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. And you will serve him if you don't serve God. I'm warning you right now. Take a look at the world. Take a look at how it's being positioned and what's happening. It is simple logic. You don't even have to be a Christian to see it. You know that something is wrong. I should not have to spell it out for you. And if somebody has to spell it out for you and you still reject it, you're just in denial. It's that simple. You don't want to change your worldview. And I know it's difficult, okay? I understand that you have to fundamentally change the way you think and feel. It's not easy. But I'm going to tell you my testimony and how I got saved. I was at work. I seen all the stuff going on in the world. It was around 2016, 2017. I saw that Gothard opening tunnel ceremony video that I've shared a hundred times. I was like, what the frig is going on? These are world leaders. What are they doing? This is, this is obviously satanic. I'm seeing all the symbolism that I've been studying the past several years, and this is demonic stuff. I had a co-worker who was older, and she just suddenly started having strokes. And then one day she died. She had trained me. She, when she died, I was so sad about it. It was so sudden. And I was working nights. I was alone. I went out the back room with tears in my eyes. I'm like, God, I don't know if you're there. But if you are, can you just give me a sign, please? And I sincerely meant it. Four hours later, I came home to an apartment we had been renting about a year. I sat down in the chair... My wife was in, an other, in the other chair. We had done this, I don't know how many times. And there's a coffee table in between us with a lamp. She reaches over and says, oh, hey, check it out. Somebody put a crucifix on the switch. They took off the switch and put a crucifix on there and, and screwed it back on. I just started to shake and cry. There is no way that that was a coincidence. That was God, who, by the way, my wife was praying for me because I told her, I don't know how many times I didn't want to hear any talk of God in this house. I don't want to hear about God. Where was he this, that, and the other thing, right? Like everybody does. How come he lets this and that and the other thing happen? I know there is a God, but I don't want to hear about the God that you've created because I don't think we know anything, right? And she prayed and prayed and prayed for me. And he used the spirit in her to show me a sign that led me to him. Now, she also mentioned that she had seen that weeks before, but it just kept escaping her attention until exactly when I needed it. That was the moment where I realized there's a God. I reached out to him and he gave me a sign. I did this twice before in the past <laughs> and I ignored it. And just to give you one other example, I was walking to work and there was this big dude walking toward me and this was in the country. It was kind of foggy it's just creepy, all right? So this guy was in a, like a huge trench coat. And, and uh, this guy was, I, I'm not a little guy, okay? And for me to look at a dude and be like, that man is a giant. Everything in my brain said, go to the other side of the street, dude, and just do it. But my, I think it was a pride issue. And I was like, no, I'm just, I'm fine. I just kept walking. And this dude walks up to me. And he, and he says, God bless you, brother. And he hands me a track. I said, thanks, man. And I just kept walking. I went to work. And I put it on the counter. And then I threw it away. 
I went to the bathroom. I came out and it was back on the counter again. <laughs> I went into I went into the office and I asked my boss, "Did you pull that out of the garbage?" No. And what did I do, guys? I threw it away again. I threw it away again. This was years ago. So like 10, 15 years goes by. And then I get this sign. I asked. The night before I had asked him, are you there? He answered me. I'm like, nah, it's just coincidence. This time I didn't chalk it up to coincidence. That's my testimony. After that, I found Robert Breaker on YouTube. He explained to me what repentance really is. He explained to me that the Christians that I knew my whole life were legalists and they were some of the nastiest people. They were so mean to me. And so I just assumed, well, this Christianity thing is BS. These people are just, they're full of themselves. They're mean, they're nasty, they're judgmental. I didn't realize that being a Christian was a direct relationship with Jesus Christ. Just private prayer between you and the Creator and understanding what He did for you. Admitting your sins to Him. I didn't know. I thought you just you had to go to this church and you had to join like this Sunday club thing and everybody acted really weird and they did all these weird rituals and it was just not for me. I didn't understand. So it took me like, I don't know, 38 years, 37 years. Yes, 37 years before I got it. And it's, it's one of the big reasons for that is because there were so many poor examples. I had so many people do weird things. And yeah, if that's the way, if you're viewing Christianity from the lens that the enemy wants you to view it from and you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, you need to reach out to Jesus on your own. Ask him for a sign. And if you mean it, if you're seeking truth, and this is important because I was genuinely seeking the truth with all of my heart. I was like, Lord, what is going on here? If you're there, can you give me, what is going on? Why is everything getting so crazy? This was shortly after Trump was elected. And everything was getting racialized right away. And I'm like, what is going on? Here? I genuinely wanted to understand. If God sees that you are seeking him with all your heart, the truth, He's going to answer you. Seek him out in private prayer. Don't go to some guy who calls himself father. The Bible tells you call no man on earth your father. And this is why I have problems with the Catholic institution. I don't have a problem with, with Christians who are in the Catholic institution. But the institution itself has a very troubled history. And if you study it, you're going to see it. Right? But I don't hate those people. I don't hate anybody. I pray for my enemies. And I don't seek vengeance. And that's how I know I'm not going to get swept up in this war. Because I'm not all about that life. <laughs> Alright? And if I have to be here and they start coming in and shooting, well, I'll defend my home, but I'm not going out and starting a war. You know, if I had to defend my country from foreign attack, yeah. But outside of that, it's like, come on. <laughs> I'm not going to get in the street and start fighting the communists. And I'm not going to join uh, the, the extreme right or the extreme left. I highly recommend you guys do not take that road because it leads you right into hell, man. But yeah, I just wanted to make this. It's already gone on way too long. But I love you guys. I'm still here. I'm not going away. God bless, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.